Now, for more perspective on the fighting in South Sudan, joining me in the studio is Majak Agut. He's a former South Sudan Deputy Defense Minister and a former political detainee. Mr. Agut, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you. Now, everybody around the world is saying, what's wrong with the South Sudanese leaders? What's happening? Well, uh, two important dimensions could, um, could, could be unearthed in trying to answer this question. First of all uh, is the uh, uh, proclivity of the two leaders to arson. I'm sorry to say that, mm -hmm. but uh, this is what it has come to. Mm -hmm. uh, and secondly is, uh, is, is, uh, is the nature of uh, the permanent ceasefire arrangements uh, architecture. Uh, which uh, put uh, the same armies in the same location in Juba together. Our position initially was uh, to have Juba demilitarized. This is what we put on the table in Addis. And we had also called for a third party force to be present in Juba to provide... Which, which, which seems to make sense because, uh, you know, you wonder, can you really have peace in a country where you have two men controlling armies with uh, artillery, heavy weaponry, even in the long term, can you really see a, pos a possibility of peace? Unfortunately, that's the nature of politics in South Sudan. Yeah. Uh, uh, politics and, uh, and, uh, and, and warlord entrepreneurship yeah. are, uh, are interlaced. And uh, as a result, uh, uh, not, not very many politicians who matter today yeah. would be what they are if they didn't command military forces. And now each of them says, oh, we want peace. But the, the armies are fighting. Who is giving the orders? Do they, are they in control of well, the Well, men, the two men on the 7th uh, came out and told the world that they, they were not in control. They didn't know what was taking place in their immediate surrounding, you know, within, outside the walls of the palace. So it tells uh, uh, you very clearly that whether, whether the two men uh, could be trusted yeah. even to run the affairs of the nation if they cannot really. Uh, take charge of controlling their, uh, their immediate bodyguards. Yes. Now, so the question becomes, uh, if, if this peace arrangement doesn't seem to be working, what is the hope for South Sudan? Well, there is still uh, uh, a lot of uh, promise out there for South Sudan. Uh, the, 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 the country is now stuck with these two leaders. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, they, they are the main uh, obstacle to, to the progress and the future of South Sudan. And uh, given the risky behavior and the way they are running the affairs of the nation, uh, it is actually time to call for uh, their departure from power because uh, what do they deliver? It mm -hmm. is uh, what I said uh, in, uh, from, uh, from the onset, their predisposition to arson, you know, to set the country alight. This is the only thing they have delivered, nothing else. Yes. And, and you know, that for the many who are observing every day, their hearts bleed for the citizens. There were women, children who are dying and trying to get out of town. Now, what, what, what can somebody tell the citizens who waited for so long for a peaceful country? It is, it is a tragedy and uh, uh, all of us are ashamed yeah. of uh, what has become the outcome of our independence. Uh, the only uh, hope is that this is not going to last forever. Uh, leaders are, uh, are transient, they come and go. And if the leadership uh, or this generation has failed to deliver the, uh, the promise uh, for, for, for the struggle, another generation of leaders is going to do that. Is there a danger of um, a different factions, uh, perhaps in you know one of these days, clamoring for secession, given now that it seems like the different ethnic groups cannot coexist? I think the the direction that the things should take in South Sudan at the moment is uh, for any serious political uh, leader or any aspirant. Yeah. To, to pursue a non-violent approach. Yeah. And, and I think that's where we're applying weapons and arms against ourselves has proven to be very, very dangerous and nobody is benefiting from that at all. Indeed, embarrassing, frustrating, and painful. Well, thanks a lot for joining us today and for your perspectives. You. Uh, that's uh, um, uh, Majak Agut. He's a former South Sudan Deputy Defense Minister and a former political detainee.